hey, y'all, hey, this is Dr. Samaria M. Covert. Let me introduce myself. <laughs> We're going to have a good topic, but I'm a licensed therapist. I have over 16 years worth of experience, actually more like 18 at this point, but we're not counting. <laughs> uh, what else? I am a published author. I am very proud to say, y'all, my number count has changed. I'm officially, I can officially say that I have published, written and published over 70 books, okay? Uh, you At the time I'm recording this, um, well, this my, my, my videos are pre-recorded like at least a couple weeks in advance at this point. I have published my 69th book, which was The Absalom Spirit, uh, my 70th book, which is called The Witness, uh, which is about the workings of the Holy Spirit and this coming revival. And I have started my 71st book. So I am so excited. I will give myself fanfare. And yes, my books are good. They're not pamphlets. They are actually uh, really book, really uh they're actually real books, okay? So I do broke, uh, anyway, I don't wanna get involved in it. I do either uh, 10 or more chapters or sometimes I do mini ebook, which is five chapters or less. I never do less than five though. But so I'm so excited about that, yay. <laughs> um, what else about me? Uh, I, I love what I do. I own a private practice called Kingdom Creative Council. That's where I'm located right now. We are in Greensboro and I have been with this in between clients. And uh, I give you faith-based principles to bring about lasting change. If you look at the intro uh, on my YouTube channel, depending on where you're watching this from, um, I merge mental health and ministry. So the place that mental health and ministry meet because church folk, um, <laughs> um, when you're dealing with people's hurts, with people's pains, with people's, uh, um, um, uh, whatever that secret thing is, that is a form of ministry. Okay. All right. So let's talk today. We're going to talk about the Absalom spirit. Now that book is as of right now, it is available. I posted links uh, below to uh, my um, resources, uh, our website, and it is available via digital download and paperback. So I'm not going to give you the totality of that book because it is a pretty extensive book, but I'm going to give you 10 points about the Absalom spirit. It will affect your mental and emotional health and how you can avoid being an Absalom and how you can avoid uh, this Absalom spirit. Okay. And remember in the Bible days, I've said before that people pass away, but the spirit by which they operate under um, is still very much present. That's why we can use the word of God uh, as our source and as our guide. So who was Absalom? Holy Spirit, we certainly thank you for today. Who was Absalom? Absalom was David's uh, son. Now David, they said, had lots of women, <laughs> and he had lots of children. Um, it is said that he had maybe 21 children total. And that was kind of the norm uh, during the Bible days. Uh, of course, with the uh, invent of, with, with, with our progression, our cultural acceptance experience, there is no such thing as to be uh, a sister wife in the modern day term, uh, but it was customary during that time that sometimes people would have, or men would have more than one wife. Um, we know that because in the New uh, New Testament, which is what we read now, it is said that an elder, a bishop, um, uh, leaders in the Bible need to have how many wives? One. So I know y'all love that sister wives and it's poly whatever, but it's not God, okay? <laughs> there's cultural expectations and there's Christian expectations, okay? So David had a lot of wives, we had a lot of children. And the scripture tells us as far as Absalom, Absalom was one of uh, David's children, but Absalom, uh, the Bible says, was very handsome. They said he was the most handsomest uh, son of all in all of Israel. He was very handsome. Uh, Absalom, the scripture says, was entitled. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. It talks about in the scripture how David never disciplined Absalom, not even to ask him, why are you doing this? Uh, go with me here. All this is going to make sense in a minute as to how we deal with the Absalom spirit. Um, it is said, and fast forward, because I'll give you a lot more detail in the book about Absalom's journey and how be, he became so bitter and angry towards his father. But as the story goes, uh, Absalom at some point decides that he wants to dethrone his father or exert authority over his father. Behind his father's back, he began to declare himself to be king. 
Absalom, uh, David had to literally run away from his, his throne at the time, fleeing from his very own son. There was a revolt. Absalom um, declared himself to be the king and that's not who he was, was or who he is called to be. And he had people that had followed him. He had manipulated other people to follow him. David again has to flee from his own son because he was trying to observe authority. Now, how the story ends that uh, Absalom ended up losing his life tragically um, and uh, because of everything that went on. And again, I'm, I'm giving the, the cliff note version in the losing his life tragically. Absalom was married. He had three sons and one daughter um, that he, anyway, he had three sons and one daughter. He lost his life tragically. And it all happened as a, as a result of his rebellion uh, against the king. The king did not end his life. Absalom's rebellion ended up, uh, he ended up losing his life uh, as, 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 as it goes, okay? And there's so much more to it. I was reading, dissecting that in, 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 in scripture and it really, really, really um, gave me real good context. Absalom had a younger brother because remember, David didn't discipline any of his kids. He was an excellent king. He was an excellent son. He was a poor father. And so I want to say this, you cannot be a passive leader and then wonder why you are, you have Absalom because you enable him. As a matter of fact, there was a book in the book. I have a chapter called David, this is all your fault. And I go into detail about how Absalom became Absalom because remember it's entitled children who are not disciplined become entitled adults. Okay. When you don't discipline people within your organization, within your home, in any area of your life, you create your own monster. There was a man by Eli, same thing happened. He ended up losing his inheritance because he refused to correct and his, his sons, or he corrected them, but they were, it was very passive. He would, he, he, he would say, sons, why are you doing this? But he never gave them consequences for their actions. And you, wherever you have a passive leader, you always have Absalom's. Okay, called accountability, called discipline, right? Uh, so Absalom, believe it or not, had a younger brother, and I'm a butcher his name. I usually try to look it up on my um, blue um, blue Bible app, blue letter Bible app, because it, it gives you the the uh, not only interpretation but the pronunciation of some of these names. <laughs> but I didn't do that prior; I just forgot. Uh, Adonijah, and I maybe pronounced that wrong. And he did the exact same thing. He waited till David was sick uh, and was on his deathbed. And he began to declare his own, his self, he did the exact same thing his brother did. Why? Because David created his own entitled children. All right, let's talk. Uh, but again, in modern day terms, you will find Absalom's in churches, in uh, regular organizations, any type of entitlement, any type of child that's not been disciplined in your family, uh, uh, people have unrealized expectations. They never grow up and they think, uh, anyway, you will find an Absalom spirit. And again, I encourage you to pick up that book because it's going to break it down a lot further. I'm only going to do 10 points today. Number one is that Absalom spirits are, they, they promote themselves to positions of authority that God has not ordained them to be. Let me say that again. They promote themselves to positions of authority that God has not ordained for them to be. You can you cannot claim spit hoop holla qualla or qualify yourself to a place that God has not ordained for you. Absalom is envious of his father's position. Mm hmm. And he thinks, well, if my daddy can do it, I can do it too. And so what happens with Absalom and his brother is that they behind, listen, behind their leader's back, begin to proclamate and begin to Absalom do himself, Absalom, both of them do himself a whole party, had themselves a whole ordination service. And David <laughs> 
had no idea what was going on. Somebody had to come to him and say, hey, you, do you, have, you, have you anointed Absalom to be our next king? Because he's out here having a whole celebration. He didn't gather a whole bunch of followers. They promote themselves to, and they don't do it in front of their leader's face. They do it behind their back. So remember this, I've said this before and I'll say it again, you cannot publicly promote people that God has not privately endorsed. Absalom thought, well, I'm the brother, I'm a shoe in. God had already selected someone to be his next. Can y'all know who, how the, how the story goes? It was actually Solomon. That wasn't Solomon's time to step in front of that place. But Absalom said, it's me. And he began to anoint himself and appoint himself for his positions of authority. That's one thing God says to Mary, don't you, don't ever, ever announce yourself. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due season, he's going to promote you, but he's not going to promote you to a position of authority. Hold on. Uh oh, give me one minute. Stop it. Uh, hold on y'all. Hopefully. Okay. He's not going to promote So, hold on, let me stop this Um, because I had a little trouble with my recording. I'm gonna make sure I can record. But what I was saying is God was not is not going to promote you to permission of, permissions of prominence that he has not already ordained for you. So God is not going to promote you to a position of authority that he has not called you to be. Absalons promote themselves. They, um, they put themselves in position they even had their own ordination services. They deceive people. It's like declaring the crown. I'm next. I'm it. I'm mm -mm. when it's God, you don't got to promote yourself. People will know what, and God, will, heaven will endorse you. That's why when Jesus was getting ready to um, birth his ministry, the heavens opened up and said, this is my son in whom I well please. Joshua chapter three, God told Joshua, uh, now I'm going to elevate you in front of the people, magnify you is what the, um, the, uh, King James verse, the new living tra translation says, I'm going to make you great in front of the people. Anything that has to pronounce or announce itself is not God. But number two, Absalom's always had impure motives. They can come off as so nice. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The Bible talks about how an Absalom would get to the gate. People will be coming in to deal with their grievances. They didn't come to meet with Absalom. They come to meet with the king and his king's constituents to deal with their grievances. Absalom used his connection as David's son to deceive people. So Absalom would meet them at the gate. He would listen to their concerns. He would pretend like he was on their side. And the Bible says when they would go to do the customary greetings, greetings Absalom would say no, and he would kiss their hand. And that's how he was able to get so many people on his side because he had impure motives and he made it seem like I'm the people's champ and I'm for the people. Absalom had a plan. They said they, that Absalom did this for four years. So Absalom's never show up as Absalom's. He did the same thing for four years and all he was doing was gathering his followers before he had an ulterior plan to take over, make them sound like he was on their side. And he had their best interest at heart. Right? Put number three, Absalons are great pretenders. They are actors and actresses. Absalons are manipulative. And I said this about my book. I wrote a book called Haman's Plot. The conversation that they're having with their friends and the conversation that they're having in front of the king don't match up. They may tell people, oh, yes, my name is Absalom. Guess what, mama? Guess what, daddy? I'm going to be the next king. Because, you know, his mama was tripping too. His mama was manipulative too now. <laughs> so we have to 
Um, I, you cannot go on what someone says. You have to identify their fruit and you're going to have to use discernment. I'm writing a book right now called discernment. It's not called discernment, excuse me, but it's going to be, a, it's about, it's about discernment, but they're manipulative, but they smile in your face. The Bible calls these wolves and sheep's clothing. They come with agendas. I wrote in my, in the back cover of the book that we seek to serve. We don't seek out positions and platforms so we can build uh, our, our, our platform. I had a colleague some years ago, and I always remember she said, uh, we don't use people to build our ministry. We use ministry to build people. Absalons, from a ministerial perspective, think that if I could just get next to who's who and what's what, I can launch my ministry. That's not what ministry is for. Absalom, God gave David the responsibility of being the king to shepherd his people. This is why First Samuel chapter 16, God said, I created for myself a king. Okay? God is not going to come down and physically lead people. He sends people. He, he anoints a shepherd. He anoints a pastor. He anoints a leader to govern his people, to lead. So we don't belong to people. But Absalom thought, he didn't have a heart for God and he didn't have a heart for people. David had a heart for people. Now, obviously he had some flaws because, you know, like I said, he wasn't disciplined in his children. So he didn't, he wasn't a perfect man, but he was a man after God's own heart. And David's agenda was God's agenda. Absalom's agenda was his own agenda. And you will never be able to move an organization, a family, a relationship, a ministry forward when Absalons are in position. Absalons are entitled. Entitled. Uh, why was he entitled? Well, because he had never been disciplined. He had been handed everything all his life. Could you imagine? Let's say a celebrity, not a celebrity, you've been handed everything all your life. Your, 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 your parents are famous. They're well-known they're well uh, endowed as far as money. You are now the recipient of that. So it is, it goes to uh, parents who have accomplished a lot or go overcome a lot. You can't just uh, uh, just handle your kids. You still have to handle some discipline and some teach them some hard work ethic. Absalom was entitled because he was raised in an entitled environment. Uh, the scripture tells us his mother was also the queen uh, her, her, she was a queen of a different, um, she, she was a daughter, excuse me, of a king. And that's how they got entitled. So she may have been raised, and I'm just hypothetically thinking, in this level of entitlement as well. So did she know how to discipline her kids? We know that we know David didn't discipline his kids because the Bible tells us so. But at least if your dad not going to discipline you, at least your mama should. But apparently that didn't happen. So, um, so when you're entitled, you ex like people who are entitled, expect other people's hard you to pay for other people's hard work right they don't want to get a job you need to, to, to take care it's like their own they're like a, adult grown children i don't know if i said i think i may have said that in the vagabond spirit as well but they're like children that haven't matured past a mentality they're entitled because you got it, i'm supposed to have no 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 i work for what for mine i'm called to that position I have uh, uh, an anointing from God. You see what I'm saying? But they think, because you got it. I got it. You ever have a friend like that that's entitled? <laughs> it's just annoying as all get out. But Absalons are entitled people. And they can't handle the word no. They're going to go after it by any means necessary. Um, I had to cut out. So I'm, I'm going to repeat this. I'm not sure if I repeated it in my last um, block or not because I, my thing acted up. Uh, Absalons... Um, what Absalom did was behind David's back. It wasn't in front of his face. He didn't go have a conversation and say, dad, listen, am I supposed to be, and from what we know, because we don't know everything about the Bible, I mean, about every little detail of the Bible. He didn't come to his, his father from what we know and say, uh, I'm your son. Am I supposed to be the next king? Oh, he would have been told the truth, which is no, he wasn't supposed to be. Everything he did was behind David's back. And that is the spirit of Absalom. 
They are doing stuff behind your back that they would never do in front of your face. They would never do that in front of your face. Let's talk about from a business perspective. Absalons pay, um, they play that game called office politics. Let me see if I can get next to a supervisor, see if I can get next to who's who, see if I can get next to who's who and whatever environment it is. Whoever is the great person that come into your life, not because of who you are, but because the opportunity that presents itself as a bear. Now, again, let's talk about friendship. You have people that are in your friend friend group and they only hang out with you for what they can get from you. I had a friend that I think is an amazing person, but the Lord spoke to me some years ago. This is Samaria. You have to be careful about people who are only hanging out with you for what they can get from you. Um, the more successful you become on paper, you may attract, after. it's not who you attract, it's who you entertain. Right, you don't, you you, you know, uh, there is this thing called boundaries. There's such there's such thing as called toxic people, toxic, and they they ne- absalons are so masterful. They never show up in the way that you would expect. You think you think absalon, uh, some kind of uh, of, 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 of weirdness. You know, you we expect some type of um, weirdness. I I can't even think of it. You, you expect them to look like something. No, 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 Absalom, just like uh, Ishmael's that I talked about counterfeit, just like Bagamon, they come in your life and they think, oh, that they, they come across as so respectful and so kind, just like Absalom did. Absalom looked like he was supposed to be the king. And then he was at the gate wooing people in and kissing their hands. Look at the Bible. It said he kissed their hand. Read it from the Living Translation. He kissed their hand. Oh, I'm so sorry that you're going through that. I can help you. And that's how he was able to gain fame and fortune, pretending like he was on their side, making it seem like, you know, you know, David, don't, he don't really have your best interest at heart, making this bit of division, but smiling your face. There's somebody the OJ's in my old school. So <laughs> I don't listen to a lot of R&B music, but when I do, I listen to music from the seventies. And there is an old song by the OJ's, OJ's, excuse me. I believe it was OJ's that went, uh, the smile in your face all the while trying to take your place, backstabbers, backstabbers. It was an incident, which I won't go into detail uh, because our time is almost up, but there was an incident where Absalom's, David and Absalom had, had met prior to uh, Absalom's rebellion. Absalom falls to the ground and bows before David. And within a short period of time, fight and planted his demise. Absalons appear to be humble, subservient. I got to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. When you call into the car- carpet on that stuff, oh, I did that. Really? I didn't. Oh, my goodness. I told you about the, about the vagabond spirit and the spirit of Ishmael in my counterfeit. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know. I am so sorry. It was all a misunderstanding. They didn't know exactly what they're doing. They didn't know exactly what they're doing. I didn't know that you didn't want me to do that. See, Absalom don't ask for permission. They just go forward. They don't say, hey, David, I'm about to have me an ordination service. What do you think? You have to be careful because Absaloms are plotting and planning against you and they're going to use the people that you are leading against you. Because everybody don't have discernment. Everybody does not follow the voice of God. Bible's my sheep, hear my voice, and no other voice they will follow. But you do have people, Absalons tend to lure in people who don't have their new babies in Christ. Now I'm, I'm using the modern vernacular, they're new babies, and they have no level of discernment. Absalons use their relationship with the leader, the king, to observe authority and push themselves in places and space. They think, because I'm, I'm David, because that's David, and I'm David's son, and we are sitting next to each other that I deserve David's position of authority. So they play office politics. This is, you, y'all know, you, you see that person, if you live, if you work in corporate or, or human services, you, 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 you can spot an Absalom, particularly you've been there a while, you're like, whatever, dude. this, this chick, this dude, like, whatever, dude. Like, you know, cause it, I don't, I always remember when I was working in the human services field, I would, you know, you, you meet different types of people, different types of, I kept thinking, wow, you have no, I, <laughs> I remember being like, well, this chick, like we all be looking at each other like, all right, whatever, dude, whatever. Cause you don't last long. 
God is never going to uh, move your organization forward with the Absalon in place, but he's also not going to allow Absalon to stay for a long period of time. Remember, remember the Bible says a day is of a thousand years. So what you may think is a long time, what I may think is a long time are completely different according to the word of God. But eventually Ab Absalom's always fall, particularly if it's something that's anointed by, by God, they always fall. Uh, and sometimes, uh, anyway, so that's that. Uh, but they play office politics. <laughs> you know, that person that's jockeying for positions and these are the people that get caught up in who they know. That's the, I think that's the name, the subtitle. It was abs the Absalom spirit. And the subtitle is because it's not because it's not about who you know. So they try to use their connections, who they know and their relationship with the king or the leader or whoever uh, to, to, to buy time and to make it seem like it's more than what it is. Absalom was the son of David, but he had no position. He had no power. He had no authority. He had no anointing. He had literally nothing but his relationship with the king. He didn't have, he didn't have any work ethic. Because <laughs> when you're entitled, the last thing you have is work ethic and wisdom. And if you're going to run <laughs> a whole organization, whole nation, you're going to need to have a heart for God, wisdom, and a work ethic. Absalom just looked the part. He thought because he looked the part, he should be the part. But we know that does not work. <laughs> it didn't work then and it don't work now. Uh, why did I write this book? Because the Absaloms are loose. They are. All right. Absaloms are resentful. Uh, so I won't, I'm going to briefly go over this. Like, I went in detail over that. But Absalom had a sister who was very beautiful by the name of Tamar. Tamar was... Um, I say S A. I'm not gonna say the word because, as y'all know, you say say if you say certain things, social media block it. S A. By her brother Amnon. After this event happened, Tamar is severely uh, in distress. She runs into arms, into the arms of her big brother, Absalom. Her and Absalom were very very close. Uh, and he says, "What happened to her? What happened to you?" I'm, I'm giving you modern day vernacular. What happened to you? She said, my brother s aid me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He doesn't. Absalom in modern day vernacular says, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Remember the father, David, had a long history of not correcting the children. He didn't reach out to Tamar, say, I'm so sorry that it happened to you. He heard about it, but he didn't do anything about it. Absalom says, in essence, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Tamar, who was the younger sister and big brother, uh, Absalom's big brother, moves into the house with him. Okay. And he, and I'm paraphrasing, basically, from what I could tell, Absalom is going to seek revenge, not only from his brother, but from David, for David not intervening on behalf of his sister, or at least doing some type of punitive action. Because Amnon, remember, David did not discipline his sons. Amnon had no repercussions, no consequences for him essaying his sister. David said nothing to his sister or Amnon or Absalom about the event that happened. Absalom are in power. They are always empowered by passive leaders, people who, are, who don't discipline, and I mean discipline, I mean discipline appropriately. Because you, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not discipline. Telling somebody don't do something is not a discipline. When your actions are, uh, are repetitive, there is called what we call a corrective action that has to happen. We teach these, I see little kids uh, in my uh, practice, we teach parents consequences and rewards. See, none of them were raised with that. And they wouldn't say anything. So Absalom says, don't worry about a big sis. I'm going to take it. A little sis, excuse me, little sis. I'm going to take care of it. They're still very close during this time. How do I know that? Because Absalom got married. He has three sons. He has one daughter. And he names his daughter Tamar after his sister. And the Bible says Tamar was very beautiful. So Tamar, the actual, the first Tamar was very beautiful. But his little sister, his daughter was named Tamar. And she was very beautiful. So anytime someone gives someone a name, okay, uh, it's indicative of the type of relationship that he would name his daughter after his sister, who he was very close to. Now, I, I kind of add to this. I, 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 I wonder uh, what it was like, what it was like 
for Absalom to not only hear what happened to her, his sister, to know his father didn't intervene. And then he, and remember, she moved in with him. I'm giving you, con this is why I got to read the Bible. So he got to walk around and see his sister, the Bible calls des desolate, which means abandoned, depressed, empty, all because something that has this happened to her that has nothing to do with her. I want to say this again. Absalons are always, and I mean always, empowered by passive leadership. Okay, so what's going on with Absalom? He's, he's, he's resentful. He's a resentful and he's bitter and he's angry. And if you don't stop resentment, bitterness, and anger, it turns to hatred. It turns to hatred. Uh, the next thing that Absalom's are is a spirit of lust. But the, lust is not just a uh, 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 spirit of perversion, but it's not just sexual lust. Lust is uh, forbidden desire. There's some people who look for positions because they are lustful. They are lusting after the applause of people. They're lust, lusting after wealth. And they think their position or their manipulation is going to get them there. So it's a spirit of lust. Um, pride. Pride is an is a unhealthy focus on self. Me, myself, and I. It's my business and my ministry and my anointing and my stuff and me. And when someone's prideful, they think they deserve to be promoted and worshiped. They want the applause of people. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so anointed. You. Yeah. That's what they want. So they're full of pride. So again, God will never elevate us. Well, let me say this. You may be elevated by man, but it'll come crashing down. The Bible says a, a prideful spirit, a, a pride and a heartful spirit leads to a fall. Right? Uh, they are delusional. <laughs> what do you mean by delusion? Delusional, you have a thought in your mind. It is delusional to think that you could put yourself in a position that you are not called to, anointed to. It's a delusional thing that you can put yourself in a position that God has not even ordained for you. That is delusional. You have no skill, no talent, and no ability for that position. No wisdom. It is delusional. It is to believe. Delusion means to believe a lie to be the truth. Absalom was, was delusional. Period. He was delusional. Uh, and last thing is Absalom was, we, we said that someone who did not have godly character. And remember, I just said that character is not defined by what happens in front of people. Character is defined by what happens behind closed doors. I was just saying that I'm preparing for a speaking engagement uh, and I may be, I've already had it by the time this is out, I don't know. But one thing I said is, how you treat people when you think no one's looking is your real character, it truly is. And you cannot tell me that you love God and you dishonor leaders, but leaders and you dishonor people. You can't, you can't, I cannot be convinced otherwise. All right. So don't want to be, don't, at the end, I, I, I do detail in the book how you don't want to be Absalom. Don't promote yourself. I already said that. When it's time and in due season, you keep doing, work your process because God is going to elevate you in due season, but he's going to elevate you to the position he's called you to, not the position you're trying to be yourself, okay? Don't be there. Humble yourself. When the Bible says humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that means that's intentional for you. You don't, it's better for you to humble yourself than the God to humble you. Absalom lost his life, but the other things that Absalom will have to deal with, for example, embarrassment, public embarrassment, humility. You know, you may uh, experience rejection because people really don't want Absalom. Most people, the people that really have a heart for God don't want Absalom as their leader. They want a God ordained leader. Don't become a stay humble, submit to the process and ask God, who am I? Who am I called to and how am I supposed to do it? Uh, I, I talked about the body of Christ, how all of us have a part. There's no I in team. That's nothing about Absalom. It's about me. No, we are a team here. Okay. Don't do what you want. Don't, <laughs> don't observe authority, but we are a team here. 
Um, but you will never be, have a grace to, to, you will never have a grace in your life to be where God has not ordained or placed you to be. It will never happen. If man put you in position, God will put you down. It is better to sit and wait on God and prepare yourself. There, if Absalom had a right heart, he didn't have to lose his life. He would have had a position, but it would not have been a position. He may have had, having a, had a position in the king's house because he's the king's son, but it would never have been the position of the next king because that's not where God had called him to be. Find out who you are and, and master you in what God has called you to be. It's not be let's not be delusional and try to put ourselves in places and spaces that God has not ordained. Once you know who you are, and I'm closing with here, I tell people all the time, the best thing you can do is find your fit. I may not necessarily be the king of this great, uh, this great nation, but I can be the best me that I can be. And I will operate in a level of success when I can be the best person I've called to be where he's called me to be. Check out that book. It is very, very good. And I am WWW. Oh, I am. <laughs> what I mean is that uh, check me out at www.com. Okay. Speaking engagements, all of my books, uh, oh, clothing line to request speaking engagements is going to be there at www.drsamaricobalt.com. There's also a link called Training Christian Leaders. I have a lot of training courses, www.trainingchristianleaders.com. But if you go to that main website, they'll give you the, the links, go there. And then, of course, if you uh, want therapy and you're located in the state of North Carolina and you want to get to the state of North Carolina, because if you have to deal with Absalom, Auntie, the mental health. <laughs> uh, go to www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. If you're located in a different area and you don't have, um, and you can't get to North Carolina, you can go to www.psychologytoday.com. This is not sponsored by them. And they will assist you in finding a therapist in your area. All right, y'all. God bless you. We're back in the day and the time. Another banger, y'all. Bye.